Welcome to the video on noise and image data from the camera. In a machine vision system, there are many sources of noise. The camera, image data transmission, memory problems such as bit failures, and even algorithms with their round off error. In this video, we focus on image noise that originates in the camera. Most of this noise originates in the image sensor it is still possible for other circuitry in the camera to contribute to noise. For example, noise can be introduced into the camera through the power supply connection. Rather than talk in broad generalities about noise, let's focus on some specific kinds of noise that are common in image sensors. These are pattern response non-uniformity, or PRNU, readout noise, photon shot noise, and dark current. The video also explains how some of these noise sources are attenuated in the camera and provides some techniques for further reducing the noise in your vision system. Before we start, you should be aware of the EMVA 1288 specification. The EMVA is the European Machine Vision Association and the 1288 specification they developed defines camera parameters, including noise, and how they are measured. You can obtain a copy of the specification at the EMVA URL shown. The specification is highly technical, and you may not want to study it. Its principal benefit to you is the trend for camera companies to specify their cameras according to this standard. That makes it much easier for you to better compare and select cameras for your application. To avoid any misunderstanding, let's define what we mean by noise. For our purpose, noise is any unwanted component of the signal, and for us, the signal is image data. We can subdivide noise into two categories. Noise which is constant from image to image, and noise that varies unpredictably from image to image. The first type of noise we will discuss is pattern response non-uniformity, usually abbreviated PRNU. PRNU is a gradual shading across the image. It is caused by the sensitivity of the photodetector changing slightly. PRNU is a scaling or multiplying noise. It is typically specified as 1% to 2%, that is, plus or minus 1% and plus or minus 2%. In actual practice, it is less than this specified value. There is a fixed pattern noise called readout noise due to variations in the image sensor circuitry, the amplifiers and switches used to read out the image data. This shows up as additive noise in the image. Since it is consistent, it is possible to correct for this noise. Let's consider another rather random noise source called photon shot noise. You might think of this as an uncertainty due to quantum physics. Fortunately, the concept isn't difficult to grasp as long as you accept that there can't be a partial photon or a partial electron. Let's suppose a photon is incident on the surface of a photodetector with a quantum efficiency of 60%. Does this single photon result in a photogenerated electron? Well, 60% of the time yes, and 40% of the time no. Now let's suppose two photons are incident on the surface of the photodetector. What happens? Will there be two photogenerated electrons? Yes, but only 36% of the time. Will there be no photogenerated electrons? Yes, but again, only 16% of the time. 48% of the time, only one photogenerated electron results. You can infer from this example that even when there are a large number of incident photons, there is still some variation in how many photogenerated electrons result. Without working through a lot of math, the answer is that for a large number of incident photons, 
the uncertainty in photogenerated electrons is proportional to the square root of the average or expected number of electrons. Suppose you had 100 photogenerated electrons. Then the uncertainty is 10 electrons, and the signal-to-noise ratio is 100 divided by 10, or 10 to 1. If you had 400 photogenerated electrons, then the uncertainty is 20 electrons, and the signal-to-noise ratio is 400 divided by 20, or 20 to 1. Following on with this, we can see 1,600 electrons is 40 to 1, and 6,400 electrons is 80 to 1. Suppose you wanted 8 bits of usable image data. That requires a signal to noise of 256 to 1, or 65,000 electrons. Here is what the result looks like graphically. Usually, photon shot noise is presented with a logarithmic vertical scale, so it is represented as a straight line. Recall from our first video on cameras that covered sensing light, the light sensor has what is called a well for storing photogenerated electrons. And recall that this well has a maximum capacity. The best photon shot noise performance a sensor can achieve will be the square root of the number of electrons in its full well. If you want a true 8 bits of data per pixel, from your image sensor, then the full well capacity needs to be at least 65,000 electrons. Most image sensors in use in machine vision have a full well capacity less than 65,000 electrons. Typically, they are in the range of 45,000 down to 20,000. The full well capacity is tied to the pixel size. The trend toward smaller pixels on the image sensor is also a trend toward poor noise performance. Let's suppose your image sensor has a full well capacity of 30,000 electrons, and that creates a nominal gray level of 255, all eight digital bits. Let's see what the photon shot noise component will be as the exposure decreases from maximum. What you see is that as the exposure decrease, the photon shot noise also decreases, although not as fast. At one-half maximum exposure, the photon shot noise is about one bit. So photon shot noise affects brighter image areas a bit more than darker areas. We've covered several noise sources. Now we'll identify techniques in the camera and in image processing that can help reduce the impact of noise. The first of these is correlated double sampling. When a photo sensor on an image sensor is reset, we expect that all the charge is removed from the photo sensor. Of course, not being perfect, the reset circuitry leaves some charge behind. So every pixel in an image sensor starts its exposure with some residual charge. This residual charge is different for every pixel. This results in some fixed pattern noise. By sampling the pixel after reset, but prior to exposure, and holding this voltage, a differential output amplifier can subtract this residual voltage and give an output virtually free of the reset noise. A similar approach is applied to dark current. Typically, there are dummy rows and columns of photosensors around the active imaging area. This is done to help ensure image quality. These photosensors are electrically active and read out along with the photosensors from the active area, but the data is not transmitted. Since these photosensors are covered with metal, they are not sensitive to light. However, they do have dark current that is a function of the exposure time and the temperature. What is commonly done is to sample the dark current from a dummy photosensor to get a typical dark current signal. Then a differential amplifier subtracts this dark current signal from the signals from the active pixels. This corrects for typical dark current. 
it does not correct for the variation in dark current from pixel to pixel or the variation in dark current over time for a given pixel. A straightforward representation of image noise is that there is a fixed pattern noise, noise that is constant from image to image, and there is random noise that varies from frame to frame. There's something that can be done for fixed pattern noise. It's called flat field correction. We will model fixed pattern noise as having two components. One is additive and one is scaling or multiplicative. Readout noise is an example of fixed pattern additive noise. PRNU discussed earlier is an example of fixed pattern scaling noise. In flat field correction, test images are acquired. One dark with no light, and another with fixed uniform light. The signal with no light is the additive noise. Its values are stored in memory. As the image data stream is acquired, this fixed pattern additive noise is subtracted from the image data. The signal with light shows, after subtraction of the additive noise, the scaling noise. The scaling values for each pixel are written into a memory. When the image data is acquired, the scaling factors are applied to each pixel of the image. The result is a substantial reduction in fixed pattern noise. There are three methods of dealing with random, unpredictable noise in an image. The first is to redesign your application and the components you use to give lower noise. This is usually the best option. The other two methods involve image processing, usually outside the camera. One of those is to use a low-pass filter to reduce the noise. There are many different types of filters possible and covering them is outside the discussion of cameras. The final way is to average a series of images that are identical except for random noise. Usually some number of images are averaged, call this number n. The average of the images will have the noise magnitude reduced by the square root of n. For example, if four images are averaged, the noise in the average image will be one half of what it is in any of the original images. This technique is commonly employed in x-ray imaging where images are inherently noisy. Let's review what we've covered in this video about noise in cameras. There are two general types of noise, repeatable, called fixed pattern noise, and unpredictable and time varying. Some fixed pattern noise is corrected in the camera with correlated double sampling and with subtraction of dark current. Other fixed pattern noise can be reduced by flat field correction. Random unpredictable noise is best remedied by redesigning the application and picking better components where possible. Otherwise, low-pass filtering and image averaging can be used. You have better insight into how cameras operate and what you can do with them. The next several videos on cameras cover the camera interfaces to the processor.